maybe because we don't know much about birds so it was really enjoyable thank you i thank you so can i start now uh yes i can start record uh, i am recording so you can start okay okay so can you see my screen can you please tell me yes yes okay Okay, Vinesh. Okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Yamini Ramesh, and as you know, today is the last day of Jungle Water and Sky uh, event, uh, free webinar which is organized by Homeopathy Voice Online School and Genoveva. And uh, you have already seen uh, two different presentations, um, uh, one of serpents, another was of bird species yesterday by Genoveva, and I hope you enjoyed both of them. So today, uh, let's talk about spider group of remedies. Uh, so first of all, let us understand you know, how spiders behave in nature. So whenever you want to understand anything uh, in Materia Medica, so any remedy, and, and when it comes to animal kingdom, especially the animal remedy, so whenever you want to understand my biggest suggestion to all of you, and also my, my way of understanding anything is, I just go to nature and see how it is. So as much as information you can have, uh, from nature itself, you will you will know that remedy more and more, because uh, you can call it different, you know, by, by different names. Maybe it is Doctor Ino signature, or uh, you know, or uh, the defense and attack mechanism in case of Amy Kingdom, or uh, the habitat and everything. But everything is related. So when you actually connect the dots, you understand that how relatable and comprehensive it becomes. It becomes really comprehensive that uh, you actually understand the minor things and you also understand why behind the symptom. So we always, you know, when we read the Materia Medica, we know what is there, but we don't know why it is there. So if, you know, exactly. if some remedy is very jealous, yeah. Exactly. So uh, when, when some remedy is very jealous or some something has burning as a special so when you go to the nature you will understand why that particular remedy behaves in such a way because by nature it is like that okay so so spiders we know uh, one spider we really know is tarantula we all know tarantula right and we know the dancing of tarantula <laughs> hyperactivity but we don't know why it is like that so today I'll try to like explore that why for you a little bit and uh, it might give you a good idea that how you should actually read Material Medica and know more about it. It's always good to, you know, to know more about your remedies so that you can prescribe it in various ways and not only based on symptoms. So I personally believe that, you know, that proving is not the only way to know the remedy. It's, it's one of the major ways for sure. But along with provings, if you know the habitat, uh, um, of the remedy or where it is present naturally, what kind of bonds it forms or what kind of nature it has, uh, what kind of behavior it has, then you will understand the whole Your remedy in different ways. correct. Sorry that I interrupt you, but we have to do a seminar that prove this. I have many cases, have to search for this. Many times the remedy doesn't fit with the proving doesn't fit with the material medica, doesn't yes. fit with anything we know about it, but it work, works deeply. Wonderfully. On, yeah. on all levels. Uh, wonderfully, deeply, at all levels, and amazingly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and you know, the reason behind that is so... Yes, and I feel that the reason behind this, because so many people have this confusion that, you know, this this symptom is not present in the proving, proving <laughs> or we don't have the proving symptom and they are so confused whether to prescribe or not. So, so the basic thing behind that is that provings are not really done well for so many remedies. Okay, because our masters have done provings, but it was 
you know, humanly impossible to prove everything, right? So now that's up to us that we should prove those remedies. We should understand more about it. And along with proving, you know, you collect the data from toxicology. Our provings were also done like that. So Hanneman, you know, Hanneman didn't actually dreamt about a proving and he did it. It was not like that. He actually knew that mythologically or... Uh, or in a home remedy or in Ayurveda or in herbal remedies, that remedies were already used, where, even in allopathy. So when he was actually translating Kulin's Materia Medica, we know that how he got to know about China, right? So similarly, if we know something about some remedy, suppose you are using it as a home remedy, try to prove that remedy and you will get all those symptoms. But before proving also, you can use those symptoms. That's the... Like that's a, the, um, you know, a broad way of using anything, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so let's talk about a few spiders. So when we, when we say spiders, what does that mean? So the English word spider comes from the old English spithera. For a spinner. So that, that word spitter up actually means spinning or spinner. So we all know that uh, uh, how beautiful weavers spiders are. Uh, all of the spiders, they weave really nicely. When I was a kid, I used to feel that, you know, because I used to like watch the spiders and, the, and their nets and all that. So I used to feel that why they don't get caught up in that in that web but other like other small insects got caught up in that into that and now after becoming a homeopath i understood why it is like that because they are so clever and cunning and you know they never get into their own web but they are really beautiful spinners right so if we if we see if we look at the spider so majorly most of the spiders are like this that their body is divided into two parts. One is a cephalothorax and the abdomen. And uh, there are eight legs. So it comes under the subgroup called or subkingdom called arthropoda. And insects are also there along with spiders. But in homeopathic understanding, we, ha we have kept them into two different groups just to make it more, uh, more practical in, use, in using. Okay, and not uh, not taxonomically. So don't go by the zoological taxonomy, but rather go by the homeopathic uh, classification of the groups. That will be more easy for you. Okay, so the body is divided into two parts of the spiders, the cephalothorax and the abdomen, and they have eight legs. The exoskeleton of the spider is composed of a tough material called cuticle. And this cuticle is very, very important because it helps them to defend themselves and also to protect themselves from, from the attacks of the enemies. Now, let's go ahead. So most spiders have poor vision. Okay, they, they always rely on the uh, touch sense more, on, uh, more than a vision. Some of them have good vision, but there are very few. Most of spiders don't have good vision. They are very poor in it and they rely on vibrations. And that's why if any vibration happens in their web, they will get to know that there is an enemy or there is someone uh, who can either harm them or, or whoever it is. And their senses are really acute. It alerts them rather than the eyesight. So vibration, touch, uh, that is more important in spiders. Other sense organs are long, fine hairs, okay? That hairs are known as trichobothria. They are on the legs mostly. Sometimes all over the body, they have the hairs. And that also helps them to sense the vibration in the atmosphere. And uh, that are able to sense the disturbance in the environment and the air currents also. So spiders are also known to be sensitive to fine change, very fine changes, which you might not know, but spiders will know. They will know the fine changes in the temperature, both inside and outside their own bodies. So one basic thing we, we know about this, all the spider remedies is that they will be sensitive, very sensitive. 
many spiders have unusual body shapes okay and and the first feeling most of the people get uh, after looking at the spider is a feeling of either fear or disgust right because of their body shapes and colors but this is very important for them because it really helps them to protect themselves so there are many ways many many uh, many benefits of having those unusual body shapes and color so first thing is they can deceive and ambush so deceive is one of the major feature of animal kingdom because the main sensation of every animal remedy is survival right they have to survive and for survival they can do anything and if they want to like want to survive want to protect themselves then they have to learn the deceit but in some sub kingdoms in some of them it's very pronounced it, it's very um uh, uh very highlighted i would say so one of them is spider and second second is uh, the serpents so deceit is really you know you can actually learn how to deceive after looking at both the sub kingdoms so they deceive and ambush the prey that's one of the a uh, benefit of having the usual unusual body shape and color then they capture particular sorts of prey with those bodies they escape their enemies escape from the enemies and they can also attract their mates okay now we will know we, we will see that there are some procedures uh, which happens with the spiders or which they do and which is helpful for them for survival so one of them is moulting you really no need to understand this because if you get this you will understand the whole you know life cycle and how they live so moulting or moulting whatever whatever you call it so moulting is basically growing out of your skin so growing out of your skin means you have to i told you you remember there is this cuticle the hard exoskeleton so what they do is they grow by periodic shedding of their semi rigid external skin your camera sorry for interruption i can uh, what happened since, since 5 minutes we lost your camera your face is not visible yeah uh, can you see me now yes, yes? okay okay so they grow by periodic shedding of their uh, semi rigid external skin or cuticle so this is something something common with the snakes also because snakes also have their outer skin and they remove their skin but this is little different from them so what spiders do is or does is that they they you know on periodic basis they shed their semi rigid external skin or cuticle and replacing it with a large new large skin which grows underneath okay so so they keep making their own skin uh, underneath the old one this is also called as moulting or egg dysis this process takes hours it's a very very critical period for them and in in this period only they are very uh, they are very sensitive okay and spiders are in danger from a predator in this period so mostly they do this in in the night you might have seen those uh in the in in houses or in old buildings or in movies also they actually projected well very, very well where you know some horror movies you will see they will you know if you enter a house there will be a hanging spider in the night and you know person gets really like frightened of that so when they are actually hanging in the air they are into this process mostly because they uh, uh, they prefer doing it night either by hanging safely in the mid air or sealed within a silk retreat or molting chamber or a cold you know this molting chamber can be anything as a cold leaf or a burrow or under the bark or under the tree somewhere somewhere where they feel safe and it's a very vulnerable they are very vulnerable in this whole process so there are vulnerable moments and spots and they are really in danger 
So you will see a lot of night aggravation, midnight aggravation in spiders because in the night only they are doing all those procedures, right? So they are vulnerable, they are sensitive and you will see those, the special aggravations in the midnight or after midnight or something like that. If we, if you see, um, look at reproduction in spiders, so they are mostly carnivores, but they are they uh, they have a special uh, courtship period so it's not here you know it is different from insects so like i told you that arthropoda have insects and spiders but in insects the reproduction and the courtship is not there because the lifespan is very short so they are really hasty and they are very sexual with almost everyone and spiders are not like that to, if you want to attract a female spider, the male spider have to really work hard, okay? And in insect, it doesn't happen. In insect, it's like they can be sexual with anyone, okay? Because of the lifespan and, and the different uh, variety of survival. So, I, I'm just telling you this so that you differentiate it from insects. But in spiders, the courtship period is a very special period. Here you will see that they are mostly carnivorous and cannibalism is quite acceptable to them. So by cannibalism means I, I'm saying that they eat, uh, you know, their mates. They eat up their mates. They eat the flesh of their own uh, group, okay? And in many species, the male, like I told you, the male has to really work hard to convince the female that he is a potential mate. Because if he is not able to convince the female, will eat up that meat, that male uh, spider, okay? And sometimes the female actually kills the male spider even after mating. So both ways, it's a kind of um, loss for a male spider. This is initially done through a courtship. And as you can imagine that male spiders tend to approach the females very, very cautiously until they are convinced and the female knows that who they are and even when many of them like to have some insurance. So male spiders have evolved a wonderful array of habits. So uh, like I was telling you initially, the tarantula dances really well and the dance is actually to attract the female mate. The dancing, you know, in, in tarantula is a kind of special dance which, uh, uh, which they perform uh, to attract their female partner. And if they, they do it well, the female will be impressed. If they don't do it well, it will be like, they will be, they will lose their life. So that's the thing. So male spider have evolved a wonderful array of habits to fulfill these two roles of courtship and insurance together. Although there are species where the female often, often most of the female spiders, they eat up the male before mating or after the mating. But there are some species where you will see that they live together in the same web. Even they share, you know, the, uh, uh, the food items and most of the things. So they share the web, they share the food item, they share the space. And in most species, the male is able one way or the another to leave the female and depart from her web after mating. So it's not only always that the female would eat up. Sometimes the male also leave that uh, uh, leave that mate after mating, okay, and the web. So we'll see different sort of different types of spiders. In many species, the males have worked out very clever methods to ensure their survival. In others, the male is so small, he is of no interest to the female, and in some, the two live together quite happily. So, there are different varieties of spiders. You can't just think about one way, okay? So, all the varieties actually persist. Many times, most adult male spiders simply die of hunger and exhaustion because they spend a lot of their energy finding and courting females and they never stop to eat. So they, this type of thing you will get in um, uh, the tarantula species, especially. They are so haptic. The activity is very haptic. They don't stop to eat and they die of the hunger. Okay. Then let's see the, uh, the male-female relationship in spiders. What are the elements? So there will be a size difference between male and female partners. Courtship. They will prefer 
uh, they are always in danger. If you are not able to impress the female maid, you are already in danger because she can eat you up. Attraction is a main thing, and that's why you will see in the spider uh, um, people or people needing spider remedies. They are either very attractive or they are highly sexual. Uh, that they wear, you know, a very um, bright clothes and makeup, and uh, even they would talk sexually. You will get that idea that yes, this is a element of sexuality. So attraction is a very very important thing in spiders, and not only in spiders in whole animal species, but mostly in the spiders. Escape and convincing are also elements of male female relationship. So when you are having a case, when you are taking a case, you can actually get the hints of all these elements in your case, and you will understand that this might need a spider remedy. The spider web. So if you look at the web very closely, and if you put some attention, you will see that the spider silk. is the fiber secreted by spiders it's a very strong material and i was very when i was reading this few years back i was really surprised to know that the tensile strength of the you know the web of the spider or the silk of the spider is compared to the high grade steel it's very tensile okay it has immense strength and spiders use silk for many ways not only to hang and you know to capture the insects mainly to build webs line their burrows then they can wrap up the captured insect catch the small fish build nests and make the parachute threads so we all have seen the parachute threads where they are you know hanging to ride and using the wind to travel great distances so sometimes you know you can imagine they can travel feet or meters of distances so uh, if you just want to like understand it in a uh, uh, in a lighter way i would recommend you to remember spider man because you know he would just like uh, produce a web and then he would travel large distances so sometimes you know movies also teach you a lot and they are not that's why they are called as science fiction and not only fiction because it's not totally fiction it's actually based on some science yeah and social behavior if you will see most of the spiders they are loners they are not they don't you won't find them out in groups or bunches very few of them live even if they are living in bunches they would have different burrows okay the separate separate webs separate uh, burrows few species show the development of communal webs but they are very rare most of them are loners not uh, uh, uh you know you you can't use that rubric company desire for they don't actually desire company they are loners so if you see attack and defense they use their web really well for attack as well as defense so so the first of webs of saint andrew's cross spider lanes have a tiny patch of white silk at the center that serves a dual purpose so if you If you look at this particular spider, the cross spider, this there is a central tiny patch of white silk which serves the dual purpose. So the picture is behind uh, the the text. If you can see that, it seems to be striking for the insect prey and also enables the spiders to conceal themselves behind it. and save themselves from its potential predator so it acts both ways they can defend themselves and they can also you know um, attack with the same thing they can actually capture the insects see this these are some techniques of prey capture and handling can you see the spider which is eating up the which is actually capturing a insect it's so fast can you yes, see yes yes so they they are different yes so there are different ways biting without the help of a web directly bite using a web and then biting they use a web bite and then wrap up they use a web wrap first and then bite and using a web and rotating while wrapping before biting so you know by any of this method they can actually capture the insect 
so there are variety of techniques for deceit so like i told you that they are very deceitful and uh, uh, they can actually uh, mimic someone else to to protect themselves so they display body color and shape that resembles a drop of a bird dung so that you know the insects will come up and try to eat that and they would capture or sometimes uh, 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 even they are not noticeable because it looks like a dung so they display different body colors and shape you can see that behind the text and it's also a good way to understand the dance and colors and attraction the sexuality of the spider so they emit a type of a chemical that smells like a dung it's a very bad smelling a uh, chemical which attracts the flies so that's bad for humans but not for not for flies and butterflies so that attracts it okay and can you to see how beautifully it is dancing with the two two legs so if we look at spiders as prey they are they are prey for many of the animals like birds reptiles mammals many arthropods also including other spiders centipedes scorpions and even some insects so here also you will see that they are very fast in their actions and why because they have a very short life span so if you look at mammals if you look at ourselves only uh, we, you will say that we have 20 25 years for education 20 25 years for you know for for your work another 20 years for enjoying what you have earned and we have like large so, so much of time in our life so we do everything with quite a lazy attitude all humans right and because we are mammals i'm just giving that example but in spiders and insects you will see that they have very short life span so some of the spiders actually live for years but most of them they die sudden death so because they don't have enough time they do everything in hurry because they have to complete the reproduction and eating and mating and what not so they have to do everything in a very short span and that's why they are very very fast and hectic it's not with mammals mammals are also animals but they are not fast most of the the large mammals okay they are slow very slow they do everything very cautiously easily in a lazy attitude so mud dauber wasps sting and paralyze the spider so there are wasps which can actually paralyze the spider they seal them inside and nest so there is fresh food for their young ones okay so they become prey for many many other animals even the even their own um, uh, members family members okay or kingdom members then king crickets can overpower and eat funnel web spiders many birds also eat the spiders so many animals are actually their enemies spider defenses so obviously the hair actually help them so uh, i have taken some examples so brazilian salmon tarantulas will bite and throw off barbed hairs from their abdomen when annoyed the hairs have tiny barbs that penetrate they actually they are like stings okay and that their hair if they penetrate the skin and mucous membrane they actually cause itching and allergic reaction so you will see uh, do you remember that symptom of tarantula cubensis where it is useful for abscesses where it is useful for itching and for allergic reaction it's a wonderful medicine because if that hair goes into your skin or if or if anyone skin then it will cause the allergic reaction by escaping from danger by descending rapidly on a silk safety line so these are some defenses which they use then they burrow themselves so so this is a very common thing the trap door spiders it is very commonly found in uh, found in the you know the doors behind the doors so that's why it is called as trap trap door uh, spider so at the top of their burrows useful for disguising the burrow's presence and ambushing the prey chambers and doors and escape the tunnels and they also exhibit the autotomy just like lizards so lizard can actually cut their own tail and go ahead similarly spiders can also do that spiders are able to amputate their own leg if it is grabbed by a predator and they just regenerate it or if not regeneration they would just escape the situation 
and ju juvenile spiders they can regenerate their own legs so autotomy is one of the feature then thread display mimicry and disguise and you can see uh, behind the text so there is this spider which is actually eating up the insect by uh, by deceit by mimicry feening so they feen as a dangerous or dis distasteful animal sometimes or camouflaging camouflage is uh, one of the main feature of all the animals uh if if you take an example the bark colored two tailed spider and the leaf colored green huntsman simply have colors that blend very well into their background of bark or foliage and then they can actually defend themselves so some spiders can also pretend to be dead by dropping rapidly down their thread and you feel that they are dead but they are actually not so there are four main groups of spiders one is a cross spider which includes arania family which has all the arenias arania diadema exabola uh, cynantia then we have second sort of second type of uh, spiders which is black widow spider which contains latrodactus family latrodactus mactans hazelti catipo and taradion which is a orange spider then we have wolf spiders which contains tarantula hispanica and not cubensis okay tarantula hispanica and cubensis both are different uh, families different uh, sub families and they are not the same then we have bird spiders which are mygale atrax and tarantula cubensis okay so so four major type of families the cross spider black widow wolf and bird spiders don't worry even if you don't remember the names you should actually know the behavior of that family and you will get it so what are the what is the natural behavior of spider intense pace i told you why because short life span hyperactivity speed okay and they are very busy yamini we lost you yes 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 to do okay i guess i got mute i don't know how <laughs> okay so intense pace speed and hyperactivity and uh, is the main feature natural behavior of the spider they are very busy they are quick and constant movement you will see uh,